This is BGL. BGL and 10 Minutes of Shorb. So big up the 10 Minutes of Shorb's guy for getting BGL on. And big up to Haphazard on the TFAK Reddit for clipping this because it was premiering a while back. It's two hours long. I'm probably going to have to sit through and react to the whole two hours later, but I can't be bothered to do it now. So we're just going to go through the clips that people upload on the TFAX K subreddit. The first one says, Marg on General League controversy. So this is BGL on 10 Minutes of Shorb talking about the whole controversy around Bobby Lee um, and all the accusations about him being the, you know, the shadowy figure in the background that was running the TFAK subreddit and Brendan believing it and obviously the fallout that led to Brian screaming at Bobby Lee on the phone and all that malarkey. So let's hear Marg BGL on 10 Minutes of Shorb talking about the whole Bobby Lee controversy. I want to hear what he has to say. <clears throat> No, it's it, like I try not to watch clips. Some people will send some shit to me. Like <laughs> during the thousandth episode, I don't know if you guys covered this, but it was like, you know, of course, anytime I mention Brendan, I'll say his fucking name. I'll talk directly. But he had this whole <laughs> somebody like people are sending this. I'm like, why would you send me this? So they're talking about you. And Brendan's like, oh man, 2000 fucking 22 is so weird. Like I didn't have anything to do with the Bobby Lee thing. It was all Brian's fault. I don't know if you guys saw oh this, my but like God. Yeah. the whole episode. Because his new, like, you know, fuck buddy co host Shanaz or whatever. Ooh. <laughs> so BGL is really standing firm on this suggestion that Brendan is fucking saying as on the side. I'm not the best person to have an opinion on this because I think I'm not really. I could be perceptive at some times, but I think sometimes I really do miss things. So I don't know. I can't really read it well. But what do you guys think in the stream chat? Do you think Brendan is fucking saying I was on the side? I can't I don't get that feeling. You know? If if anything, I get I get the feeling that Brian tries to like impress her and first a little bit more. He's always like looking over at her, trying to make be funny and shit. But I don't even get the impression that Brendan pays her much attention. Maybe he's doing it on purpose to act like he's not really interested, but obviously they're fucking on the side. But BGL seems to be very sure and very certain about it. He keeps repeating it. So, is Brendan really fucking saying as an aside? Would he be that dumb? Would Brendan be that stupid to shit where to eat where he shits or to shit where he eats? Would he be that dumb? Would he be that dumb to shit where he is? Especially considering everything that's gone on with Brendan, everything that's happened with him, getting exposed with the DMs, Addies and Baddies thing, the Annie Lederman thing, the Kalila thing. Would Brendan really be that dumb to do something like that? And fuck his, like, you know, producer, assistant person. <sighs> That's kind of insane. Kind of insane if he did do that. Like, and if they're doing it, like, with, you know, consensually, like, on the side, just being quiet. It does make sense a little bit because you remember that clip that we played in the live stream where she was clearly wearing Brendan's shirt? Do you remember that? <sighs> that looked very suspect. She clearly had Brendan's shirt on. So it's like, what, were you sleeping in the office? Do you guys stay over? I don't know, but, but also I kind of do believe BGL because I did say one time during a stream that Sane has given me the impression that she's like a good girl. Like she's for the mandem. Like she's the type of girl that could keep a secret. You know, she's the type of girl that will, you could introduce her to your wife, introduce her to your baby mother and she'll be fucking you on the side, but she, your baby mother will never know. Like she, she, she's happy to keep a secret. Like she's down for some, some madness, which is obviously a bad thing. But I think she strikes me like that. I wouldn't, you know, it's bad to say about people, but she does strike me like that type of girl. So maybe it's possible because B Joe ain't letting this go. B Joe is not letting go of this idea that saying that is fucking Brendan on the side. Either way, let's continue. What do you guys say here? B Joe is the one to talk to. Uh, I don't know if he's if he is, but you know, Bappa is trying to to the side. Don't destroy the last bit of innocence I have, plus the liability, yep. Let's talk about BGL again. The back end is crazy exit. I bet Joe co-signs Sainaz better than better her than all the hosts on... Oh, Chris Rizze. I bet Joe co-signs Sainaz better her than all the hoes on the road. <sighs> that is brutal, but that could be true. I could see that woman, because she's a bit redacted herself, but I could see that logic making sense of her. Like, okay, cool. At least he's not raw dogging like strangers, like hundreds of them. Maybe it's just this one person and she seems sweet and she seems like she's not going to bring much. She's not going to be messy. She's going to like play in the office and leave it there and go home. Is like 
a lot of the people are asking like what's up with bobby lee now and you're just like yeah. you're like i feel bad because knowing like i'm in that room and knowing how much brendan didn't want to answer that question <laughs> but he do you, you guys remember how he if you watch this yeah he completely deflected yeah he's like i don't even know bobby. he's like I, bobby i've never friends with him My i don't friends. know who he is like brian obviously totally harassed him and i'm like <laughs> knowing the actual inside story of like no you hired fake hackers who told you that Bobby Lee was running the subreddit and I you called me up and I was like, maybe <laughs> sit on that information rather than do You know what's interesting about this now they're talking about it again? Because I still couldn't understand why they went so hard at Bobby, given everything that happened, right? Because you would you would, it just didn't make any sense to me. But now they're speaking about it some more. I'm thinking to myself, maybe when Kalila kind of exposed the whole like Brendan DMing her and stuff, maybe he never actually got over that maybe he kind of in a weird way held bobby lee responsible for not keeping his girl in line and he always had a little bit of resentment for him for that and you could imagine that kind of thing also got him in a lot of trouble with his wife so in an effort to prove that he wasn't doing what was he was accused of that's where the whole narrative comes about that bobby lee is running the tfk reddit maybe that's the whole point because I never understood why Bobby Lee was getting loads of vitriol and loads of energy and hate and why Brian Callum would get on the phone and scream at Bobby Lee. It's like, why did what did Bobby Lee do? I don't understand. But I think it was the embarrassment and the shame of Kalila exposing Brendan. Brendan obviously not being able to take that well and then taking it out on Bobby. And if you remember as well, early on, when Brendan was on Tiger Belly, he was always giving Kalila hungry eyes anyway. And he would make these type of jokes where like, he would say shit like he doesn't think, like he'd insinuate, oh, Bobby doesn't doesn't deserve Kalila. She's too hot for you, those type of things. So maybe from the beginning, like similar to how Brendan never liked Malik from the minute he saw him first, like not even, he didn't even meet him. He saw him on fucking Instagram. Maybe from the beginning, from minute one, it was always doomed between him and Bobby because Brendan probably thought he deserved Kalila more than Bobby Lee did because he just, you know, he thinks Bobby Lee of less than a man. He's small. He's wimpy. He doesn't like confrontation. He's got a squeaky voice. He looks at what he does. Da, 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 da. So maybe that's the whole reason why it ended up the way it ended up because I still don't understand why he had any right to like be angry at somebody. It's like, bro, they should be angry at you. You try to fuck his girl doing anything about it and then like two hours later you're like pretending the la times is running some fake story on bobby lee while he's at dinner <laughs> to make him panic by the way that's a detail i didn't know that's a detail i didn't know the devil the added detail there is that allegedly he was trying to push it as if like the la times was investigating it that's fucking scandalous and call you back and then you ambushed him with i'm like this was all you dude yeah. like sorry but then yeah. but can i be honest with you yeah i swear to god <laughs> the thick boy jersey is that's a that's a that's a grail item. I'm not gonna lie. That might be a grail item. Honestly, big up ten minutes of sure. This might be a grail item. That's I, I have to get a hold of the fucking dicey dicey hoodie. That is a fucking good pull. That is a fucking legendary jersey. That that is very rare. That might be rarer than any Supreme box logo. That might be rarer than any Bape camo hoodie. That might be rarer than any bit of fashion you've seen. That is an actual rare, rare, rare. That's like getting the original. I need to get one of those. The, uh, the original Abbott Kenny Fight Club t-shirt, right? The original like Turbo Sluts t-shirt. The original Scrooge McDuck t-shirt. The one that Brennan did to kind of take the piss out of, out of Dana. Like that's a very rare pull. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. God, when this was all happening, I thought you were like the Mike Baker, dude. Like you were his CIA insider, dude. Yeah, it's funny because you would assume that, but I'm like, and anybody calling me a handler, I'm like, do you think? No, no, no. I didn't think that, by the way. I didn't think that. I didn't think BJ was involved in the in that all shit. I immediately, when that whole thing happened with the fucking hackers and the 600 pages and shit, I immediately smelled a scam. But I knew is immediately that Brendan had got scammed because Brendan seems to be somebody that can easily get scammed. He got scammed with those hyper hyper hypergenic hyper allergic whatever the fucking name is of those cats recently remember when his wife wanted to buy or his wife wanted cats but brendan allegedly is allergic to them and he tried to get some cats that weren't 
you know, that wouldn't fuck up his allergies. And then he got completely scammed and hoodwinked and some other stuff happened too. So Brendan is very susceptible to be scammed. So I knew immediately when that whole thing went down, PJ wasn't involved. It was definitely just Brendan getting scammed. But I think he was happy also to get scammed because it gave him a, a storyline. It gave him an out. Like, oh, look, see, these guys are hacking. You know, it kind of gave him an out and shit. Um, big up everybody in the stream chat. Yo, big up Austin Casey. I see you. I'll go on Space Car. I see you. Assad, what's going on? That's like getting the Golden Hour gold jacket. Oh, exactly. Yeah. The Golden Hour golden jacket. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yo, that might, I might have to. I might have to collect that shit. I'm not gonna lie. Little by little, maybe that might be the next thing. Now, little by little, every month, I might have to start collecting some pieces before this whole ship goes down. I might have to start collecting some fucking pieces because I saw somebody actually post on the Friday Kids subreddit that they've got a collection of old shirts. I might have to start collecting some pieces, t little, little by little, little by little, from the old school thick boy, you know, T Fat K fucking army fucking merch. I need some shit, man. I need to collect some. And I might I actually need to get a hold of that 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 jersey. Remember the jersey that Brendan did with Specialized? He lied and said it was a collab, but it wasn't. It's just like a custom shirt when he was doing the whole like Fit Boy bike club thing. He had some like orange and blue like jersey thing. That was I think it was like a BMX jersey top thing, but it was it wasn't a collab, it was just a custom shirt. So yeah, maybe I'll start doing all that sort of stuff. I think Brendan would listen to me on <laughs> like he's the most arrogant fucking yeah. person. He doesn't uh he, he would never now it's a convenient scapegoat to be like other oh, people may i'm like yeah you don't listen to anybody you like you will you will come to people with an idea and you want to hear yes right. yeah but you know you i've never he's never come to me with this like should i do a or b and i'm like you should definitely do b and the only times <laughs> when i did say like he came to this bobby thing and i'm going like i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie it's actually good to hear that brendan doesn't listen to anybody it's good to hear that all the mistakes that he makes are purely down to him i'm not gonna lie it is quite gratifying to hear that he rarely takes advice. He's very hard headed, right? Like, <laughs> and he has to learn by failing very, very publicly and tragically. I actually like that. I'm not going to lie because it means he doesn't have any, he doesn't have anyone to kind of like, you know, blame or to point to. It's like most of the time, 90% of the time, every decision that he makes, he makes it. He doesn't even consider anybody else's opinion. He doesn't run it by people. He just makes his decision and keeps it moving, you know, and let it and lets it play how it plays out. And usually it plays out badly. Um, yeah, big up space guy. There's got to be a Buffalo exchange in LA that has a shit of that thick boy. Yeah, I remember last time I went to LA, they had these places, these like, um, we have a few of them here too. They, they had these like charity shops where you like, you'd buy stuff by the weight. So I'd imagine those kind of places would have so much shit. And they usually get stuff from like all look all all over, right? All surrounding counties and stuff. They send all their fucking um, you know, second hand clothing to them and you just label it. Or they just put t shirts in one section and you just pile it into a bag and then you weigh it at the till and then you pay what you pay. So there must be tons of that shit. I think they may be called Goodwill stores and stuff, whatever they're called in America, but charity shops in general, there must be so much random T Fat K merch in charity shops across the UK, across the US. They must be, bro. Oh, I wish I could get some. Um What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Out of your mind, you don't know how Reddit works, so I just go, yeah. I mean, I would just maybe don't say anything right now because it doesn't yeah. really make it like, if if that is true yeah. that Bobby Lee is secretly <laughs> harassing you on Reddit, like <laughs> for no reason. Yeah, when um, you say it out loud, it makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, how can anyone believe it? Is that? True, that, but that Bobby Lee controls a hundred thousand person subreddit, <laughs> but also doesn't own a computer and plays video games all day. Okay, and... but the server was Tiger. It was an interesting. It was an interesting way to like try to change the 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 narrative or to like put. I don't. I don't know. Even if, even if they fought it through, because I guess in Brendan's head, he wanted people to think it was Bobby Lee, because it was a way to like make sense of the situation. I tried to fuck your girlfriend. You tried to get me back because I tried to fuck your girlfriend by trying to destroy me on a, on, a, on a Reddit. Maybe that's the point of it. Maybe that's the point. But either way, they didn't think it through because he's not the right person to blame because he's useless, right? Anything outside of comedy, he's useless. That's like part of his shtick. That's part of his charm. Anything outside of making people laugh, he's not good at it. So it's like, how could he in his bed, like, what? Like it just didn't make any sense, man. Still, one of the best, it, one of the best, best times following Brendan was that whole arc. I swear to God, I loved it. 
your belly. How do you explain that? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah, you definitely, um, there's email <laughs> confirmation and two factor authentication with, uh, <laughs> you factor. know, like it is, you know, you know it's, it's like you literally, you can put fucking, you know, I suck cocks at fucking <laughs> tfatk.com. Right. And be like, that's Brendan's email. It's the fact that the person that hacked the tfatk subreddit most likely did this. The person that hacked the subreddit probably did this, right? They probably did this. They probably did this. They probably did that. View page source. That's the funny thing. Most likely, that's what that person did. And they probably billed Brendan, I don't know, a few thousand bucks for this shit. <laughs> that's what they probably did. Could you imagine? Only Brendan could get scammed like that. And he saw all these like HTML things, right? HTML code. And he thought this was like hacker shit. <laughs> he thought this was hacker shit. Honestly, he thought this was hacker shit. Honestly, Brendan is the gift that keeps on gifting. The gift that keeps on giving, not gifting. I'm actually stumbling my words now, that like fucking Brendan. Let's continue. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> he's gay as shit. He comes, yeah. he comes to you with A and B, like, should I do A and B, and both A and B are bad? Right. right. You should do Z. I always tell him, I'm like, you, you, you're the past few years for you that i experienced at least it was like the choose your own adventure book where like you're like i'm gonna do the absolute <laughs> dumbest thing possible it's like should i go pick up those gold coins or stick my hand in a wood chipper you know, <laughs> I know. um but it was funny because he he that's just one example of he's blaming brian but then he was like oh man i had some really terrible people around me giving me really bad advice yeah, like, and I did i'm like you. he's talking about me but but using terms like oh i had a business manager i'm like I know all the people who are your managers. Like you yeah. don't think any of them are bad people. They still work for you. <laughs> and you're all you're like, you're like Mark Mark Harley, business manager. <laughs> like, but also who didn't work for you really. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Towards the end he did do that, right? Remember towards the end he was making it seem like he purposely got rid of everybody. He cut away all the bad influences. He cut away all the all the fat. And he's got now a lean team. The show's gonna be good now. People that I trust, people that have my best interests. It's like, bruh you got yourself in this situation like you got yourself in because i still think part of me still thinks right and this is a very maybe naive take but a part of me still thinks when that episode happened of trash tuesdays where andy Liederman spoke about only funny comedians asking her to walk her to the truck and then kind of saying oh my god i know that guy i know that guy he tried to holler at me too i believe if brenda would have just ignored that episode if you would have just pretended like it didn't exist and he acted like he actually doesn't read comments and just pretended like it didn't exist and just kept on trucking, I think he would have been fine. Yes, people like myself would have spoke about it and whoever else was, was online at that time would have spoke about it. But I think if Brendan would have just pretended like he didn't hear that episode, everything would have been fine. But the moment he engaged, the moment he started to like, oh, and to be fair to him too, to be fair to him too, to be fair to Brendan, I don't think he had a choice. I have, I have a feeling some of the more vindictive, some of the more evil-minded people within the teeth that case subreddit. Because <laughs> some of these people are fucking awful, right? They're not like me, because I have, you know, I have certain things I don't talk about. I don't talk about the kids or the wife too much. I kind of leave these alone. But there are some people within the teeth that K, you know, hate squad who have no morals, no principles. They don't give a fuck. They just want to see the whole thing burn. And I, it wouldn't surprise me if somebody decided to send that clip to his wife, which then kind of, blew everything up so i don't think he had a choice he had to address it you know i think that's what happened i think when kalila said what she said somebody from that reddit clipped it and then sent it to his wife i said hey look what <laughs> look what your <laughs> look what papa is doing he's trying to fuck bobby lee's girlfriend <laughs> he's cheating on you look he's cheating on you he's cheating on you so i think he was kind of forced into it but if he wasn't forced into it all he had to do was just ignore it man because i don't know i'm just maybe i'm just I've been a maybe I've been in too many dicey situations myself. I just don't think you have any right to ever tell somebody how they can or cannot tell a story about something that they did with you. If you engage with somebody in something, especially when it comes to an attraction kind of hooking up thing, that's a story that you both share, an experience you both share. They are well within their rights to talk about it however much they want to or not, but you can't tell them not to do that. So I think Brendan should have been aware of that. Let them speak their speak. Let, let them speak their piece. Call you unfunny. Tell you like they'll never suck your dick or whatever. Say all these mean things about you, and just keep it moving. It would have been fine. But 
Brendan's not that kind of guy, so he didn't do that, and it also turned out the way it turned out. Um, but yeah, I wonder why Temis or Shaw got BG on at the moment. By the way, interesting pull. Don't get me wrong, entertaining. I'm gonna watch the whole thing probably again tomorrow. The whole thing in full. So if you wanna watch that, we'll watch it together. But I wonder why they decided to talk to him now. What's happening? Did he just wanna jump on? Was he just bored? I wonder why they they, they pulled him now because he's been a bit quiet. He's not really on the Reddit anymore. I don't really see him talking about Brendan on social as much. But again, I don't follow him, so I don't know if he is talking about it. But usually, people on the Reddit post stuff about him when he's talking. So I wonder what happened. I wonder why he just popped up again. Because it seemed like he was kind of keeping a low profile. But I guess he's back out here again, kicking Bappa's back in. And for us, it's perfect entertainment. So big up BGL. Next one. Next clip. Next clip. Next clip. Next clip. Next clip. By the way, he's looking very, very plump. And very red in this particular clip. Marg on Papa's work ethnic. He's looking very pump and very, very oily, right? It's like he looks like a bit of like a, he looks like a Savaloy here. He looks like he's about to burst. I'm not sure if that's the if that's the gear he's on. If it's maybe a couple of bumps before he started. I'm not sure what's going on here, but he looks very ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> big up beach oh big up beach juices big up awesome. keep it moving but it doesn't know what yeah. that means yo like a lot of his life would be saved honestly a lot of brendan's life a lot of the issues in his life would have been avoided if he did know what keep it moving meant if he did embrace the mantra or the philosophy of or the way of life that is keep it moving he would be so much better off someone like him who is that hated who is that despised that's actually the key, the cheat code. Keep it moving. You're never going to convince people that don't like you to like you anyway. So just keep it moving. Fuck it. So try to convince people that you're a beast of a guy, a beast of a dad, a beast of a... It's like, bruh, just... But hey, we're not here to give people lessons and shit. Let's just watch and enjoy the shit show. Big up Austin Casey. I appreciate you. Let's continue. Mark on Papa's work ethnic. Let's hear what, what BGO has to say. Let's hear the nice words. Let's hear the nice review that BGO has for Papa's work ethnic. I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious. You know, five years is plenty if that's all you're doing and you don't yeah. have to have a job and like, and you can literally hire. Hey yo, big up Ricky Pitcher in this chat. Why well, want Ricky Pitcher? Long time no see, brother. What's going on? What's going on? Someone to help you write jokes, which he did. Hmm. You know, he just still would mangle them <laughs> according to- Oh really? By the way, I didn't know that. Let's read down that again. So Brendan did have joke writers. I always said before that I felt like if Brendan got joke writers to help him write his jokes, he actually might have been a decent comedian. Like if he just had Pete, like he maybe he maybe they come up with premises together, but the writers actually help him construct the jokes, and then he just goes on stage and says them. There must be comedians out there that do that. There must be comedians out there. That do that. So if that's the case, I think he'd be much better off. But I'm guessing because Brendan's redacted, even if he does get jokes written for him, he still has to go and perform them. And it's not easy <laughs> when you're Brendan, you know, when you can barely talk, you got a marble mouth, you got a heavy tongue, you got 17 fucking nicotine patches in your mouth, you know, it's it, it's a lot. So maybe that's what was hurting him. But according to BGL, he did have writers. I didn't know that. Let's play that one more time. I feel like, you know, five <laughs> years is plenty if that's all you're doing and you don't yeah. have to have a job and like, and you can literally hire someone to help you write jokes, which he did. You know, he just still would mangle them, <laughs> according to fucking Derek and you never, Hassan. You never wow. thought you'd see that hustle again until you met Shop. Right. Oh, <laughs> hardest work in the room, B. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that white boy that worked Sometimes you come into zoo culture, do three bad. sets of bench over an hour and 15 minutes, and then bounce. <laughs> was... Did you hear that? He would go into zoo culture gym and do three sets of bench presses over an hour and 15 minutes. What the fuck are you doing in a gym? for an hour and 15 minutes where you only do three sets of bench i don't know about you if any of you guys work out or don't work out but usually the bench is usually the place where you can kind of bang out quite a lot of sets and reps in quite a short time there's not much to do there as a movement except for racking up the plates especially if you've got the bench already or if you're not waiting for it but it's usually the place where you can kind of get through quite a lot of fucking reps and sets in pretty short time Maybe 15, 20 minutes, you could probably bang out your entire set. What the fuck is he doing for an hour and 50 minutes? 15 on the fucking bench press. That's insane. But also very on brand. Very on brand. He's definitely the type of person every time, like, 
I've got a, I detest people who are on their phone in the gym. I detest it. Every time you turn around on their phone, I'm one of those type of people where I, when I go to a gym, I'll either have my phone on shuffle or I'll play like a mix or something, but I'm not going to keep touching my phone. I try to like get through at least a set or get for at least a workout before I'm on my phone. But there are some people who legitimately, every rep, after they finish, on their phone. After every fucking rep, on their phone, on their phone, on their phone, on their phone. So it's no surprise that Brendan's one of those people that would go to the gym and actually spend an hour and 50 minutes just doing one exercise. <laughs> That's insane, bro. That's insane. I've heard of people, and I salute those people. Salute to you. I've heard of people who go to the gym and just go on the fucking... Um, treadmill for an hour plus i don't know how they do it because the treadmill to me drives me crazy i have to run outside but i know some people who will just walk on a treadmill run on a treadmill for an hour in a gym just that an hour two hours just doing that one thing it's like for me i have to maybe it's ocd maybe it's ADD, adhd and shit i have to be bouncing around doing loads of different things in the hour that i'm in there but fucking hell bro three sets in an hour and 15 minutes now nah, brendan is a weirdo it's like, how do you do it? <laughs> but literally, I love guys who say shit like that. Like, I'm the hardest work in the room. I'm like, actually, you're the last person to the studio, the first one to leave. Like, I love that. I love that because we have evidence of it, right? We've all seen Chin's vlogs. Chin's vlogs inadvertently have exposed Brendan's lack of work ethic in a way. Because Chin's vlogs, where he has no life and he just lives at TFAT K, you see that he's always the first one there and he's always the last to leave. And usually, if you watch Chin's vlogs, the person who's holding up the show, the person who they usually wait for, if it's not Brian on T-Fight K, it's usually Brendan. Brendan's usually the person they're always waiting for. Always. And he comes in like, like he's Stephen A. Smith, right? He's got the whole Steve, you know, the Stephen Castaneda, you know, Stephen A. Smith kind of walk. Like, I'm here, guys, right? He's fucking walking in super slow, taking his fucking time and it's like bro you know all these guys have been here since whatever they've been here like come on man hurry up man get on it you got this small team like you know respect their time a bit but then when he gets on the mic he's always talking about how hard he works how much work he's doing it's like bro and also you have to imagine Brenda doesn't record he doesn't edit he doesn't do captions he's not writing descriptions like that's all done by other people so all he does he's basically on air talent but he talks as if like he f cuts, you know, he films, he color grades. It's like, bruh, bruh, relax. Like, I literally tried counting up his work day one time. I'm like, okay, yes, you technically show up at 9 a.m. on Mondays. Yo, big up Asada disease. I'll do an hour on a treadmill, just need good music, yeah. I don't know how people do that, man. I can't do the treadmill, honestly. I'm, I, go, I go crazy. I can't do it. I have to just go outside. I'd rather walk outside for an hour or run than go on a treadmill. The treadmill just drives me fucking crazy. I'd, I would love to be able to do it because I think it's obviously, it's a good way to get fucking cardio in without having to go outside. But I know people who legitimately just go into the gym, get on the treadmill, go on it for an hour and a half and then go home. It's like, wow, how do you do that? <laughs> I, if, I'm, if I spend an hour and a half in the gym, I'm doing like 25 plus exercises. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes he would just show up randomly like an hour and a half late because he's getting a rub and tug. Um, <laughs> like literally. That has got to be annoying, isn't it? Imagine waiting late. Imagine waiting for Brendan to turn up at the office so he can film another episode of his shitty short show or Below the Belt back in the day. And the reason why he's late is because he's getting a rub and tug. Could you imagine how furious you'd be? You woke up early. You're fucking in that horrible LA traffic. You get there. You still got shit in your eyes. You're tired. And this guy isn't there and he's taking ages. He's there and he comes an hour late because he got a fucking rub and tug. <sighs> I, th I remember like being behind him one time and seeing him pull in. That's, that's a fucking hawk move right yeah. there. <laughs> and yeah. just like, cause like again, everything's ready to go at nine. All the producers are there, I'm in the room. Yeah. And like one time I was like right behind him. I'm like, oh shit, like he's gonna think I'm late cause I'm coming in behind him. And I see his car get back on the freeway going in the direction of like the week before he was like oh yeah there's like my buddy was <laughs> i hope this is true i hope this is true only brendan could this could only happen to brendan in it only brendan could be so unlucky that on the way to work he doesn't realize that bjo's behind him the entire time as he takes a detour to the front of, to the <laughs> before he gets to the office <laughs> oh this is so fucking funny Tell me there's like a really good rub and tug that direction. I'm like, 
cool. Like I've never been to one, you know, but I like, and then like the next Monday, I was like, he just went like, we were pulling it. And then like, he just zoomed off in the other direction. Like it was like an impulse thing. And he comes. I don't know about you, but like, maybe I'm being a bit crass here, but is, is Brendan a bit of a psycho for enjoying hand jobs that much? Do, do guys enjoy that stuff that much? I don't. I don't know. Maybe getting it once or twice, I'd imagine might be thrilling. But going to a rub and tug place like on a on a daily, unless maybe they'll go in there under the pretense that you might fuck them. Maybe rub and tug places are like undercover, like whorehouses, right? Brothels, maybe. I don't know. But usually they're usually just like a rub and tug, right? You go there, you get your fake massage and they jack you off and finish and you keep it moving. But I don't know, man, like in general, like hand jobs are a bit like, yeah, like anyway, going and getting them all the time and paying for it is like, <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit insane, no? Why not just go to a fucking brothel? Why not just get a 304 somewhere, pull up to some street and pick up a, you know, pick up a street walker and do that? Like, why would you both, like, I don't know, like, it doesn't, the effort, it just seems like, unless maybe these places are like, cool they've got arcades and wi-fi and cool vending machines i don't know i just find it insane that he likes rubbing tugs this much like i don't know hand jobs just don't excite me the way i think they probably excite brendan comes in at like an hour and a half late and doesn't say anything he was just like because <laughs> sometimes you're like oh yeah i had to talk to my agent in my car or i had to do this drop yeah. the kids off He's like, hey, what's up, everybody? It's like, yeah, no big deal. We've just been waiting for 90 minutes <laughs> for you to show up and you didn't text me. Dick. But in other words, he would do that in TFAK on Mondays, but he'd leave. Hey, big up, Brian. Different strokes, different folks. I see what you did there, Brian. I see what you did there. Different strokes, different folks. I see what you did there. <laughs> like, you know, 132. Yeah. Then the rest of the days I could come in for an hour or two on, you know, for King and the Sting on Tuesday, Wednesday, only TFAC case, like Max. I'm like, you put in an eight hour work week yeah. in the <laughs> studio, but you're like hardest worker in the room. I'm like, sorry, you, you all you do is show up and talk. Yeah, You don't even do pre-production. <laughs> like, you know, the, the producer for King and the Sting slash the Golden Hour, Nick, um, he's really good at his job. Like, you know, he's, he does a, like all the, so it's like, he literally just has to show up, but he has this narrative of like, <laughs> hardest worker in the room. Th that we have to blame rogan for that in it we have to blame rogan for that i think rogan's the one that introduced the whole hard work mantra into podcasting and shit especially comedy podcasts it doesn't make any sense like maybe if you're like an you know you know uh fitness podcast motivational podcast or something maybe the whole hard work angle makes sense that grift but if you're doing comedy if you're a comedy based podcast the whole hard work angle shouldn't be something that you push because fans are not tuning into your show because you're hard workers they're tuning into your show because they like you as a person you seem likable and you also are funny or you have funny guests or you talk about funny things or it's just an entertaining show but they're not tuning in because you're hard workers so we have to we kind of have to blame rogan for introducing that kind of hustle culture lingo whatever to that field um, to that obviously space with these people and then of course we have to blame brendan for thinking that he works hard because he has loads of podcasts you know and the funny thing is because we figured it out on stream or i figured it out in real time with you guys the reason why brendan has a lot of pods isn't because like you know he enjoys podcasting or he's got so much important things to share with the world it's basically a hack it's, a, it's an advertising hack Right when we found out how the whole advertising thing ha works and it's a scam and shit, essentially each show has different ad. Each show has its own ad contract. So he basically found out, and I think most of these comedy podcast people found out. That's why they've all got million pods. They don't all have one. They have many, many other shows. They found out if you just copy and paste your show or copy and paste a podcast show and change the name, you can have diff you can have different you know ad deals for each pod. So you basically double, triple, quadruple your money that's the reason why they all have these podcasts not because they have anything interesting to say there's no good information they're not trying to entertain the fans to like the fans they're just merely doing it as a cash grab which is fine but let's not conflate you having a cash grab with you hot working hard and it doesn't matter anyway because you're meant to be a comedy podcast like make me fucking laugh bitch 
Are you though? Oh my like, God. <laughs> in what way? By the way, Brendan, I'm going to start showing up an hour and a half late. Uh, uh, yeah, I heard about a robin tug. Over and just not that. mention it. That was the funny part. He was like, "Hey, what's up, guys?" It's like, "Hey, <laughs> am I allowed to ask you where you've been?" Or yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know that again. I, I wish maybe I've got to experience it first. Maybe if I go to a proper robin tug place, I'll probably change my mind. I don't know. But I can't understand being that addicted to like rub and tugs. It makes no sense to me. Like I don't get the allure. I don't get the appeal of it. It, it wouldn't really do anything for me in a slight. It's a swear to God. Like it really wouldn't do anything for me, especially not to a point where I'm like going late to work and you know I'm fucking putting my fucking career in jeopardy just so I can get like a rub. Like huh? Nah, it's not that deep. But yeah, maybe it is that deep for Brendan. No pun intended another clip another clip courtesy of the t5k subreddit this one is titled mark on baba's issues with rogan oh this should be good let's hear about brendan's issues with joe rogan this should be fucking good i love it deuces macchiato <laughs> anyway let's continue let's hear about brendan's issues with rogan when people are ripping on rogan special i haven't watched it mm. but I know for a fact this is what's going on in Brennan's head. He's like, ha, 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 ha. see? Damn. Because he has a rivalry with, with Joe. You guys uh -huh. may or might know this. This is not a surprise to me. It shouldn't be a surprise to you. The rivalry, Joe, shouldn't be a surprise. Only because I remember that epic time where Brendan said something like, oh, yeah, I'm going to now take the mantle. Now that Rogan's gone to Austin, Texas, I'm now going to carry the mantle. I'm now going to carry the torch. I'm now going to hold a scene up. I forgot what phrase he used. He said something along the lines of like, yeah, I'm the next one. I'm the one taking over from Rogan. With a straight face, by the way, with a straight face, in all sincerity, he said on the pod that he was now taking over from Rogan. Like he was going to fill that void. I remember thinking about it. What? What? Again, Rogan's not funny. I understand. But like as a respected figure, yeah, that's it. Hold the fort. Exactly, Koyla. Thank you, Koyla. Remember, exactly. He said, hold the fort. I'm going to hold the fort. I was like, what? Like, Rogan's like, not funny. We all know that, but he's revered. He's respected. He's loved. People actually seem to enjoy his company. Like, I don't think it's the same with you guys. I think people tolerate you because you're friends with Rogan, but I don't think they actually like you or love you the way they love Rogan. So the whole hold the fort thing was like bizarre. It's like, you, you, you don't even have your own career established. Why would you think people would be like, yeah. So I'm not surprised at all that Brendan does have his own little rivalry with fucking Rogan. Brendan behind the scenes, like, like because Joe has been critical of him in private about his standup, you know, and again, I sincerely believe. <laughs> this is so good. Honestly, I'm just, in my opinion, right? Again, maybe I'm just a bit, private and protective of my space but i just find it incredible how bgl seems to know so much about brendan and seems to know him again, again he could be waffling he could be making all this shit up but i don't think so the way he speaks about brendan he speaks about him like he knows him intimately and it's wild to me how brendan allowed this guy who he barely knows into his intimate inner circle to the point where he can speak with a level of sincerity with a level of certainty about brendan's intentions and about brendan's thought process in certain situations and you can hear it and think yeah that sounds like brendan like the guy was around for like what a year two years at most and he knows so much about bubba how why would you let somebody in you especially when you're someone like brendan who's got all this hate around you your friends with a lot of like quote unquote high, what's we'll a high caliber? Your friends with a lot of like influential, popular people. At least be a little bit like protective of your like space and your so. Yeah, you know I mean, like you want to move accordingly because. But Brendan let it all out. He was telling. He was really pillow talking. He was really pillow talking with BGL, letting him know all of his inner thoughts. It's like fucking hell, Brendan, man. This guy knows a lot about you and he didn't even know you for that long. It's like, fuck, you know. That Joe's one of the few people out there, like he may be like, 
as reported by a lot of people, he can verge on kind of being a dick, you yeah. know? And I, it's like, I, I know many people like them where it's like, he's kind of a leader and an alpha. Like, say what you will, but it's like he... Yeah, no, I agree quite a lot. I don't think he's lying either. I don't think he's lying. I know people like Papa, they are unaware how flippant they are. Yeah, I don't think he's lying at all. But I just, I just don't, but I just couldn't understand why he's so trusting immediately especially with like maybe relationship and work is different but i think trusting in terms of like him complaining about joe to bgl or being very or not caring if he's moaning and bgl's near about someone like rogan you know what i mean because it's like maybe move a little bit you know have a bit of tact you know whatever i don't know i don't know i just find it insane he has this energy of like he's aggressive you know what i mean and yeah. it'll kind of like you know andy dick talks about how they'd be on the set of fucking news radio and he's like right. shut the fuck up you pe like yeah, it's yeah. like well yeah you're Bullying. coming to set high and you're fucking missing your lines like he snapped on you right yeah right joe has had conversations with brendan where he's like dude you need to fucking like this special is a disaster you know whatever <laughs> like he was critical of Gringo poppy interesting um and brendan held on to that you know like brendan like acts like oh whatever i don't give a shit but there are people he can ignore all the comments, but there's certain people in his life that he obviously can't yeah. ignore. And um, he and Brendan, we also know, is the type of person who only listens to somebody when they've got more money than him. He's one of those type of people. So with Rogan, he kind of can't ignore him because Rogan's got all the things that Brendan would want, especially when it comes to money. So he kind of has to pay attention to what he says. But there's a part of him that despises rogan for pointing those things out and probably is a part of brendan that thinks he could do what rogan does it's not that difficult you know he probably thinks that as well he's like this guy acts like he's something like he's special he's not even that funny i could do that i work just as hard as him you know like he's probably got that kind of thinking going on so <coughs> so brendan just in general must be really hard to talk to right just in general so like you know it just it just must be really difficult to get through to him point blank because in his head because he's made money because he's had a level of success you know you can't give him any advice it's like i've i've already mastered the game of life you don't know what you're talking about i've got fucking cars you don't have cars i live in a mansion you don't have a mansion just shut the fuck up you know he's, he's got that kind of uh processing power in his brain kind of like because he's trying to push back against it too and he's like because I think at first he's like, oh, yeah, like he, he maybe might have pretended to watch it, you know? Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, he sent it to... And why do you send a special <laughs> to people that's already done? You know, and it's like for feedback, <laughs> yeah. it's like, did you like it? Like, you're not going like, come watch my hour and give me notes. You're like, here's what I'm about to put out. It's like, cool, <laughs> start over. Don't you know? put it out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Literally, that's, the only, that that's the only advice you can give is like, you know, start Change over. Change the title. <laughs> lose 30 pounds, do better jokes, shit. To talk about the advice, do you remember that? Do you remember that period in time? I think Br Rogan admitted it. I think... Brendan admitted actually one time. Brendan admitted that all his friends told him not to do You'd Be Surprised. But he thought specifically that Rogan and Brian Callan were jealous of him because of how quickly he got a Showtime special, right? Within like a year of him doing stand up. So he did it anyway. And then, if I remember correctly, when they spoke about it together on a pod, Brendan and Brian, Brendan and Rogan, Rogan said something along the lines of like, he also didn't want to push too much brendan to not do the showtime special because he felt guilty for the episode where he made brendan quit ufc and i remember thinking oh that explains their relationship so much so that explains why in the beginning of their relationship when brendan had quit the ufc and was getting into podcasting and stand up heavy it explains why rogan was so defensive and so protective of brendan because he kind of felt like he was responsible for Brendan quitting UFC, but he didn't want Brendan to like not be like homeless and shit, not be able to look after himself. So he was doing everything in his power to make sure Rogan, to make sure Brendan landed on his feet, which also might explain why at that particular time, Brendan had the highest amount of appearances on Rogan because Rogan was basically trying to make sure that he was able to land on his feet, getting him on a show, getting him ads, getting him views getting him attention exposing him to his audience blah, blah 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 but then obviously when the relationship changed that obviously changes all that dynamics that might explain a little bit of it save your beard stop doing stand-up yeah. yeah don't have a paper mache <laughs> cut out in the back um 
He's like make a, it an hour. He's it's like uh, Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, right? Joe Rogan is Brett Favre. And his job is. Uh, I don't watch football, man. I wish I could get this reference, but I don't watch football, so I don't know who the fuck these guys. I don't know the relevance of this point, but I'm sure this hits properly. But I don't watch football, so I don't know. You know, it doesn't land the same way it probably should land. I wish I knew what football meant and the rules and what people did and shit, so I could really get this point. But unfortunately, all I all I have are jerseys, cool jerseys in my cupboard. I don't know anything about this point. Rodgers, yeah right? yeah the, it, i mean i think you know that's an insult to aaron Rodgers, but um, <laughs> you know there but there so what I'm, all I'm saying is there's legitimately from what i know about joe he does like helping people and i think he comes at brendan in a potentially very harsh way to his ears because brendan is sensitive to criticism yeah but he's trying to be like i'm the only fucking person because he's trying to up with yes men or you won't yeah. listen to other people criticizing you are you like you got a fucking problem on your hands I wonder also if that's the reason why Brendan never was successful in sports or athletics, professional sports, sorry. That inability to like ex take criticism because it seems to be something that he's always probably suffered from. He doesn't seem to take it too well. Like, cause I think I remember an episode with him and Eric Griffin. Remember when Brendan and Eric Griffin were doing this weird show where he'd watch like his old fights. And I remember Eric asking him about, oh, did you watch like tape on your fights? And he said, nah, his, his coaches would just handle that. He would just turn up to the gym and just whatever they said to do, he would do. But he wouldn't watch any tape. There'd be none of that. It'd just be like, just was like, what? So you didn't know what you were getting into. I was like, no, nah, like just, <laughs> I don't know. It seemed weird to me. I'm, I'm sure it's normal for some fighters. I'm sure some fighters don't watch tape and just let their kind of coaches handle it for them. But I found it odd as that. Like, you don't really have a base in this. You're kind of getting into this purely based on your athlete, you know, athletic kind of specimen potential and shit. You'd want to give yourself every advantage to kind of win a fight and maybe, you know, watching tape and stuff and knowing who your opponent is in a deep level, understanding how they move and what sort of stuff would be advantageous, but he didn't even do that. So clearly he has an issue with like just sitting down and, you know, taking that sort of information in. So I wonder if that was the reason as well why he never was as successful as you probably hoped he would be in sports. Yeah. Like when Girl Bobby dropped. <laughs> and all Brandon could fixate on was like, well, you said you liked it before it dropped. And I'm like, the motherfucker didn't watch it, dude. He's doing <laughs> oh, six, three-hour podcasts yeah. a day. Yeah. You know, he didn't have time. And then he sees it. And but it's sees 25 minutes. They got Ricky Pitcher. I don't know. So weird that BGO is not only trying to be a comedian, but his come up is purely shitting on Brendan. Is that true? Is he trying to be a comedian? I don't think he is. Again, I don't follow BJ on social. I don't know what he posts online, but based on what I see on the so on the Reddit, I don't think I don't. I never seen him. I never seen anyone post bits of. I never seen anybody post anything about BGL pertaining to him doing stand up. I don't know. I know he went to the like a comedy college or something or university that's very very funny and lame, but I don't think he's been pursuing if anything he does a skit i know he does a skits on social media and shit that people share but i don't think he's getting into comedy don't get me wrong weird approach to try and make yourself famous by just shitting on brendan like this because when you used to be friends and stuff i get it but i don't think he's trying to be a comedian i don't think so joe no, I know. <laughs> he I, couldn't again, even do 25 right. minutes <laughs> but why would you you know what i mean it's like <laughs> why, like you watch a minute of it you're like yeah he still sucks at comedy you know? yeah. um i honestly think he regressed from his first special yeah. like it's, i'm not even joking yeah. yeah i said that too by the way i said that too big up bgo i said that too i said that too i said immediately that i thought that you'd be surprised was his best special i think you'd be surprised shits all over gringo pappy um you'd be surprised might be actually better than fucking burn the boats I swear to God, you'd be surprised might be actually better than Joe Rogan's Burn the Boats. Um, he definitely did regress. There definitely was more of an attempt to do comedy in the conventionals, like the storytelling comedy. Like, if you watch, you'd be surprised. Obviously, it's terrible, but you can tell he's trying to be a comedian. You know, he's not just winging it. You know, he's not just kind of like, you know, going through the motions. Gringo Papi was kind of going through the motions, but at least with you'd be surprised, he was actually trying to be a stand up comedian. You know how he carried himself on stage, the cadences, the things he was saying, but it just was terrible. The actual quality of it. Um, so maybe it's a good thing he quit because his heart was really probably never in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and not just the production value, but like, <laughs> they'll finish with this. He he legitimately had a grudge where he's like, he would kind of try to downplay Rogan's comedy, like, you know, people saw your show and said it was like a TED talk, and like, wow, <laughs> wow. 
Could you imagine? Again, Brett Rogan, Rogan is shit at stand up, but nobody, no, everybody should be offended. Doesn't matter what level of comedian you are, you should be offended if Brendan's taking a piss out of your stand up. He's that bad, right? Doesn't matter how bad you are, if Brendan is in a position where he can poke fun at or mock your stand up comedy, you should take that so personally and you should be so offended, super offended. <laughs> that someone like that could be judging anything that you do oh my god mm. that that like helps his ego a lot to think that other people don't like rogan stand up oh so like gosh. by doing this like brendan would actually watch that video and be like ha told you like yep wow. I, you're trying to criticize me but you're the one who people don't even like <laughs> oh my gosh mm. so he's never gonna say that in public yeah no. but just know for a fact because <laughs> i heard you know what makes sense again BJ could be lying here. Let's take it all of it as a pinch of salt. But I believe him. You know why? Because Brendan is too much like he love bombs too much when it comes to Rogan. There's too much love Rogan. Just spoke to him the other day. Like he goes out of his way to always suck his dick. Obviously on the pod. It wouldn't surprise me if somebody that does that is also the person that's quick to say the worst things about you behind your back in private to other people in the industry, in the scene and shit. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if that, that was true because he does go out of his way to always nut hug and gargle fucking, you know, Brendan's taint in his mouth at every fucking point. So it wouldn't surprise me if that same person is also very quick to like whisper, you know, at your fucking misgreeds and shit. I definitely could see that being the case. So many times, like after Dr Rogan dressed him down for, you know, the Grigio Poppy <laughs> in Dressing private. Down. Yo, what's going on with the two days to try fucking slander here? NJ Ranger getting in on him. And two days is a bum. Too lazy down building his period two weeks. What's going on? Is it late? Is 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 two days to try? Let his video really bad. Why are you guys getting on two days to try, man? Let him, let him rock, let him rock, let him rock. Yeah. Like I mean, it was like a you know a parent lecturing somebody. Yeah. Um, and it was corroborated by someone else who was in the room. You know, <laughs> uh, that I can't that I can't say who it was. At first, he lied to me about it. He was like, it was Joanna. It was not Joanna. <laughs> um, but he held on to it for months. Yeah. You know, and would like say snarky things to Joe, like <laughs> passive aggressively. Yeah. That's you awesome. know, he's like, he's like, uh, he put out. So essentially he's saying that Brendan has held a grudge over Joe because Joe called him out. I guess maybe the handler comments and maybe things in private about the gringo pappy being shit. <sighs> Brendan never stood a chance in it. Brendan never stood a chance, bro. Holding grudges against people because they're trying to tell you what you're doing is terrible and you should maybe try and, you know, get it to be a good level before you put it out in the public is wild. Some the remember the green room diaries? He was like <laughs> like where he was like, I write a bit an hour before I go on stage. No, you don't you work on it all week. I don't know why you feel <laughs> yeah. the need to lie about it. But By the way, I didn't know that. That that, that that's new information. Green room diaries are not written in the green room an hour before the show. They were written weeks in advance. <laughs> <laughs> which is classic brendan isn't it classic fucking lying brendan uh green room diaries I'm, I'm i'm literally writing them before i get on stage no actually you're writing them the week before it's like fuck brendan man always fucking lying um what's that nj ranger so logan paul went after that trans boxer and it kind of turned <laughs> NJ Ranger fucking haze too lazy to try. <laughs> oh, that's a really good impression, actually. I'm not gonna lie. I read it. I read it and I heard his voice. <laughs> oh, but big up two is to try, man. Big up two is to try. Big up two is to try. He's doing these like city specific, like, oh Charlotte, you guys should have a Muggsy Bogues fucking yeah, thing, that. whatever. He put that out and like Rogan said something positive about it and he couldn't help but be like, oh, should I have asked your permission before that? Like he actually texted him. Oh that. my it's God. It's like, bro, man. like let it go, man. Damn. <laughs> this it's is Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. it's Joe Rogan. Oh, I kind of I kind of have to watch the whole thing. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to probably watch the whole thing later on because, yo, big up, big up, Mo, big up, Mo, big up, Mo, big up, Mo, big up, Mo. Big up, Mo. Chicken Tinka Zinka. If you had the chance to interview slash co-host with BGL for one episode, would you be down? to chick to cause why not there's nothing to talk about really i don't have nothing to ask him but why not we could watch some fucking funny clips on the on stream together why why the fuck not why the fuck not why the fuck not why the fuck not 
let's fucking burn the whole house down um but big up mo appreciate you appreciate you mo but yeah i want to watch the whole thing now because bgl has a tendency to kill people he, he, he kind of can you know how i say sometimes i like to kill the room he can sometimes kill the room so i wonder in this particular stream or this particular interview when did it get to a point where the tmos guys were starting to look at each other like we're kind of tired now we want to go to sleep and he's just going on and on and on and on because you know bjo can talk for fucking ages so i want to watch it all now and see what point have at what point did he start to like completely batter them over the head i'm sure there was a point in the episode i probably watched the whole thing to find out but big up those guys man um so far so far so good so far so good